Hey guys, Alex here, back again with another review. Today it's Final Battle 2007. Just got this in the mail a few days ago. And let's get right to it with the first match Bobby Fish and Matt Cross versus uh, Ruckus and Jigsaw of the Vulture Squad. This match was okay, wasn't really that special. Um, kind of a basic tag match to get the crowd going. Uh, the crowd wasn't really into it though, that was the problem with it, I think. Um, you know, some good spots here and there. Uh, some, one really nice one where. Like Jigsaw did a dive out to the ring, and then right following that, Matt Cross did a, a dive to the ring, which was pretty cool. So he had a few spots in there to help pick it up, but it was really a, you know, average tag match. Nothing really special. I would expect a little bit better of a match to open the card, but it was alright for what was there. Uh, two and a half. Um, next, we had Larry Sweeney versus Claudio Castanoli. This was basically just like a story driven match. Like, nothing really, anything happened here. Um, they played up the fact that Claudia was hurt the night before by Daniel, whatever his name is, the guy that almost broke Kurt Angle's arm on SmackDown, who was the new member of Sweet and Sour Inc. And so Claudia came out, kept won the match. They attacked him before, like injuring, hurting his leg, so Larry focused on that. And it was a quick, you know, two minute match, nothing special. And it was really just there for storyline. And, and I was fine with that. It was like five minutes, and Larry cut a nice little promo beforehand. And Larry's always funny. So no matter what he does, he's always entertaining. So. I didn't have too much of a problem with it. I just give it a NA and a good storyline stuff, and you know, that's about it. Then we had a no disqualification match of Jack Evans versus the Necro Butcher. This match was pretty good as well. Um, these two guys really worked well together. You know, Jack Evans being that guy that can take a shitload of punishment and take take a shitload of bumps, and Necro being the Necro Butcher. You know, famous for his uh, ability to take pain. These guys were really well together. You know, Jack was able to take a lot of the uh, more brutal, uh, hard-hitting stuff like a back, uh, backdrop on the chair or whatever. So it was all good. Um, you know, they really put up the whole idea that like it took a lot to take either one of them down, and you know, pretty good story. Uh, wasn't really crazy about um, Mar, the new member of the Vulture. I can't remember what the girl's name was, and whatever. You know, joining in and kind of getting stopping Lacey. I thought that kind of distracted from the match, but whatever. Well, it's no big deal. But, you know, it was a good brawl and good, good uh, violent match for what it was, so I'll give it three stars. Next we had Davey Richards versus Nir Mirmuchi, uh, ah, geez. Mirmuchi Mirafuji. Noichi Mirafuji. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't pronounce his name. Sorry. Mirafuji. There, I'll just say that. These guys had another good match. Um, they had a good technical wrestling match to begin with. You know, really got really picked up at the end. Had a few good spots. You know, all really great stuff. You know, and really, when you got Dave Richards in the ring with anyone, especially a Japanese talent, he works great matches with. I, I, this match was really w well done. Uh, it could have been better, but you know, they weren't given a ton of time, but they had enough time to have a good match. So I give it three and a half. Next, we had the Hangman's Three: B.J. Whitmer, Brent Albright, and Adam Pearce versus Delirious, El Generico, Kevin Steen in a tables are legal match. This match was a brawl. And it was exactly what it should have been. It was a brawl, it was a fight. No tag mat, you know, no tag team. It was just fighting. A lot of table spots, a lot of good table spots. Um, some innovative ones like Adam Pierce doing a pile driver off the top rope through the table to Delirious. Really sick. Um, you know, uh, uh, even um, Pelly Primo came out and put uh, Shane Hagador through a table, which I thought was a really good spot. So, really good match, really fun, you know. A lot of violent spots. The bush worker Luke came out and you know helped out for a second, and like walked right back after like a minute. So it was fun, really entertaining stuff. You know, I give it three and a half stars just for sure entertainment and for you know what it is it was exactly what it should have been. It was violent. It was brutal. It was another step in the storyline for the Adam P Adam uh, Pierce delirious storyline. So really good. Crowd was into it a lot, so that helped a lot. Next we had Ernie Osiris versus Ricky R Rocky Romero. Sorry. Uh, squash in like a minute, so NA just it was there. Then we had Nigel McGuinness cutting a promo about his injuries that he suffered the night before within his match with Austin Aries. You know, they showed video of like half him at the match, he looked really fucked up. He came out and talked about, you know, some guys in the crowd were chanting, you know, oh, drop the bell, drop the bell. And then Nigel said, you know, oh, I'm coming out here, I can't compete tonight. And I'm wondering, you know, maybe I should drop the bell. And it's like, just says, you know what? Fuck that. You know, I'm going to keep the belt because this is, you know, because I, I, my injuries and blah, blah, blah. I'm, you know, this is who I am, blah, blah, blah. And just basically ripping on the guy, the people who were chanting, drop the belt. And, like, basically, you know, 
getting a nice promo to keep him relevant and really entertaining. And this actually was right before he turned heel, so it was really good. It was a really good promo. Like you really saw a lot of raw emotion from Nigel, and that was really cool. So really appreciate that. It was a really good promo. Then we had Roger Strong versus Eric Stevens for the FIP World Heavyweight Championship. This was a, a good match as well. Really good match. It really picked up steam at the end of the match. Like they really sold the idea that Roger Strong couldn't put Eric Stevens down. You know, he tried to get count out victory. He tried to hit, hit him as hard as he could, just couldn't do it. Match started out kind of slow though, so that kind of hurt it a little bit for me. But the ending really picked up steam, and you know, Eric Stevens looked great in this match. I really liked it a lot. I, I kind of like Eric Stevens. I kind of wish he'd be back in the Ring of Honor. I think he'd be good. But anyway, good match. Three and a, three and three fourths. You know, a lot of good uh, hard hitting action from these two. Then we had uh, no uh, sorry. Fatal 4 for the number one contender spot, Chris Hero, Austin Aries, Brian Danielson, and Takeshi Morishima. This is supposed to be a four-way for the belt with um, Nigel McGuinness, but Austin Aries took a spot because Nigel was injured. This match was awesome. Uh, really played to the storyline of Brian Danielson and Takeshi Morishima a lot because uh, Brian Danielson went right after him, tried to beat the hell out of him in the first opening rounds of the match. Chris Hero kind of, you know, was in there, you know, just showing off how good he was. You know, he had a lot of... He didn't really do a lot of moves in the match. He was mainly there as like the cowardly heel that jumped in the last minute. But it kind of worked with his whole character, so it worked for him. And, um, you know, really good style. I like the fact that, like, they took all three guys, the Lane Takeshi Morishima, well, kind of all three, basically just Austin Aries and Ryan Danielson taking him out. Um, and then, you know, not uh, Chris Hero did his whole cowardly heel thing, and then it came down to Austin Aries and Brian Danielson, and these two just put on, like, instantly transformed to, like, a scientific match where they're doing, like, uh, basic wrestling moves and just the ending finale where Brian Danielson is hitting him with the elbows. Austin Aries counter, put him in the, hit him with the knees and try to get him in the cat or the um, horns of Aries and then Brian Danielson would counter back and give him the elbows and back to the cumulation. It went on forever and just huge. It, the crowd was going out crazy for this match. This ending sequence was awesome. I I got to look out for a DVD for um, that has Austin Aries versus Brian Danielson because these two guys just had phenomenal match. I really want to see these two have a match now, just based on how good they are nowadays. I wish it was possible, but probably not going to happen. This was easily the match of the night, and, you know, kind of wish it had been the main event. I understand why it wasn't, because, well, it wasn't for the world title, you know, so they want to put over the tag team titles more, but I think this was the best match of the card, so it should have been the best match, or should have been the final match, but really great match, four and a quarter. Then we had uh, the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Title match, the Briscoes versus the Age of the Fall, the Tyler Black and Jimmy Jacobs. This match was pretty good as well. Um, there was one little problem with it though. It just felt like the roles were reversed. It felt like the Briscoes were acting like the team that wanted to win the titles, where they just couldn't put the Age of the Fall down. No matter what they did, they just, you know, they kept hitting them with their best moves and it wouldn't work. Well, the Age of the Fall just didn't seem like they had that whole drive like oh we need to win these belts we need to win this which is what the storyline was supposed to be that being said though you know great stuff you know they had the uh jimmy jacobs taking a huge bump out to the outside like with the double um like double toss from the briscoes to the outside really cool saw a uh doomsday device on the apron to tyler black which was something i've never seen the briscoes do i never seen him do that now actually so that was really cool and, you know, really good, you know, pretty kind of spotty at the end of the end, but that's, you know, classic Briscoes back then. That was there. They were spot guys back then, especially in their end matches. But it was good. I just said, like, I, I think the story was kind of uh, backwards. I think it should have been the age of the fall that was just giving it everything they got and they couldn't put the Briscoes down. But the crowd was into it and they really got in. They really got into it near the end, you know. So it was a good match. I give it three and three four. I knocked it. I was going to originally give it four stars, but I knocked it down just because I, I just couldn't get into that I just didn't like the whole story element of it but good pay-per-view all overall it's maybe not one of the best uh, final battles but it's still a final battle so it's still good I give it a 8.75 out of 10 definitely worth going your way to pick up especially if you like um, the, t the Briscoes or the Age of the Fall stuff you know and the f four way is awesome so you know something you might want to check out if you got the chance to uh, be back here tomorrow with my Royal Rumble uh, review after the show goes off the air. So take care. Bye.